Press the bell icon on YouTube and don't miss another update. Let me tell you first of all, why am I smiling like this and looking so happy starting this edition of Cut the Clutter? Because usually I'm talking about grim things like politics, corruption, allegations, counter allegations, fights, defections. Not today. Today gives me an opportunity to step away from all this to something very pleasant, something sporty. And again, not about sporting controversy. Cricket, in fact, has given us too many controversies lately, but actually something to celebrate. Uh, and why am I decluttering this? Because I think it's about a sport that we know something about, because we know the stars in that sport, but we don't exactly know where that sport has arrived in India, that is, unless you've guessed already, badminton. Now, there is no major badminton tournament going on right now. A major as in a world championship or an Olympics. So why are we talking of badminton? Because Indian badminton has now produced at least one star of the market value to rival any cricketer in the country. So what was the big contract that Virat Kohli got from Puma, the sports goods manufacturing company? He got a 100 crore contract for an eight-year period. Now see what's happened with badminton. Our own PV Sindhu, Indian champion PV Sindhu, has just got a contract, a similar contract, from a Chinese sports goods manufacturing company, leaning for 50 crores, but only for four years. Now we know that cricketers have a longer shelf life because badminton is much more taxing on your uh, knees and your physique. Uh, but for a badminton player, and that to a woman, usually that is a big debate, say in tennis, that men get paid, men earn much more than women. That's also the debate in Indian cricket, that Indian women get paid much less than men. But in this case, a woman in a sport in which India is not dominating the world as it does in cricket, she's got this big deal. And now in information is also surfacing that India's number one male player, that is Kedambi Shrikant, is also getting an offer of 35 crores from the same company. So a Chinese sports goods manufacturer is offering this, these huge amounts to Indian badminton champions. Why? Also because China has traditionally ruled world badminton. Uh, number one, number two, number three. People, uh, ch champions tend to be either Chinese from China or of Chinese extraction or Chinese ethnicity. They could be from Malaysia, Singapore, uh, sometimes even from European countries. Uh, they can be immigrants or Japanese. So for China, for the Chinese company, these are big markets. India is a big market. So what better than Indian stars? Now, why are we celebrating it so much? Because the belief in India has all this while been that only cricketers make money, no one else makes money. That needs to be challenged. That has begun to change. You see, for example, if you track Kabaddi League au auctions, you will find that players are sold for quite a bit there, sometimes in a couple of crores or more players from Iran, Canada, Kazakhstan come and uh, appear for auctions in India for Kabaddi. But this is a different league. This is the first time that a player from a sport other than cricket has won one single deal of a size to rival the biggest superstar of cricket right now in India. It is true that our tennis players, Leander Pace, uh, San, uh, Sanya Mirza, in the past, Vijay Amrit Raj, have earned a lot of money on the circuit but not one deal like this. Now one, this is a big fillip for badminton in India because this will make others think I can do something. Remember, India at this point, if you look at the top 50 in men and women, India has quite a few names there. Uh, let me not repeat all of them, but let me tell you that top 10 women, there is P.B. Sindhu who finished 2018 at number three. Uh, and then there was Saina Nehwal at number 10. Among the top 10, anybody beats anybody on a given day. So there isn't that much to choose, frankly. Unfortunately, of the top 10, Carolina Marin, who defeated PV Sindhu at the Olympics in Rio, she, as we know, busted her knee uh, playing uh, recently and might be out of action for some time. Men, 
we have Kedambi Shrikant at number 6 or 7. This just moves there. We also have Samir Verma at number 13. We also have H.S. Pranoy at number 19. So there are three men also who are somewhere near uh, the top and each one of them has had big victories uh, in recent times. So this is the big strength that Indian badminton has built. In fact, the sport, the international sport which has acquired global strength in India after cricket is now badminton. So that is something to celebrate. It will draw more people to badminton. It's also a lesson to other associations. Uh, Tennis Association, which has had a lot of internal fights and issues there. Uh, I'm talking of areas where we have strength in India. Table tennis, we have some good players, but really uh, not top of the world. All these sports have to build local leagues because it's only when they build local leagues, as cricket did with IPL, uh, that you have, you give opportunity and rewards to a much larger set of talented young people who then don't have to wait for that one big reward of 50 crores for eight, for four years, who get rewarded through the year playing in these leagues. And then because they compete and they know that the better they perform, the better they will do. Have the ambition and aspiration. And that brings in excellence. So once again, congratulations PV Sindhu. Congratulations Kedambi Shrikant. This is Indian badminton has done us proud. But Indian badminton after Indian cricket has also shown us the way because India's strength is it's a very big market. So once you produce stars, global brands will come and invest in those stars. So uh, for cricket, India is the biggest market. For badminton, in India can be at least the second biggest market after China. So other sports also have to realize, have to understand the value of the size of the Indian market. Football, for example. Hockey, uh, all of the rest of the hockey playing world cannot arrange the crowds or TV audiences for a good hockey match as we can do in India. So all those associations have to go this way. This is a win-win for all. There will be more excellence, better sporting performance and more money and India will look that much better. So once again, on that happy note, I have to conclude this cut the clutter, but I'll make Two more points. One, I do hear a see a lot of complaints in your reactions that I move too much while talking. Maybe my hands move move too much or I might myself shuffle too much or I keep lifting myself on my toes. Now, I talk to you like I were talking to you anywhere. I don't have a teleprompter. I don't have a text written anywhere which I follow because a tele teleprompter can be very helpful. Besides other things, it keeps you rooted where you are because you have to keep looking at the teleprompter. But I'm not looking at the teleprompter. I am. I have no text. I am talking as I am thinking. Some of them, I hope you like it. Uh, but if some of you find it distracting, my apologies. I, I'm not at this point of my life. I'm not going to start getting a script from somebody and reading it. Uh, because I am happy to be sort of rough and ready uh, with all the imperfections of head woven cloth as they say. Uh, second, I know that you have been watching our YouTube channel regularly, our, uh, our viewers, viewer numbers are going up, our subscribers are going up. So please do, if you don't subscribe already, do subscribe, tell your friends to subscribe. We mostly talk about politics, government, governance, complicated issues. We try to simplify them and we also try to bring newsmakers to you. So please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and keep watching.